Hey guys, welcome back to Sip and Dip with Chelsea. Today's video is a subscriber request for me to try out Chrome French Ombre tips. It just so happens that I got some liquid chromes in, so perfect timing. This design, y'all, is so easy to do and it doesn't require any gel. So let's get started. I am currently testing out and trying this Orly peel base, so I will give a full review eventually, but I definitely want to use it for a few manicures first. So that shine you see on my nails, that is this peel base, which will let me pop them off in a few days. For this look, I'll be using Revel Nails Erica, and then for my dip powder liquids, I'll be using 10 by Tina's. I am going to be building up an apex, so to get started, I'm just doing one small stripe down the center of my nail and then pouring the powder over top. This is totally optional. You do not have to build up an apex, but I am for the length in this particular design. Once it's dry, I'll use a stiff scrub brush to dust it all off. Now for the second layer, it's going to go a little bit further back and a little bit more on the sides. If you want to skip building an apex, you can. You can go straight into doing just a few full layers on your nail. Adding two more layers before the full layers is just going to help me have more of a natural arch on the nail so it's not too flat when I go to do these French chrome ombre tips. Once it's dry, then I'm going to dust everything off. So this third layer is going to be a full coat. So I'm going to guide that liquid back towards my cuticle area and drag the excess down, making sure I do not get this on my skin and then pouring the powder over top. So again, you could be starting at this point if you wanted to skip those first two layers. No big deal, totally optional and personal preference. I am having so much fun with these subscriber requests. So thank you guys again for commenting them, the great ideas. It's very inspiring for me and I have so much fun with these challenges. So feel free to keep commenting them. If you have any questions, designs, anything you want to see in an upcoming video, just let me know. All right, once it's dry, we're going to dust it all off and go in for another full coat layer. So go all the way to the back, all the way to the sides, making sure you're not getting this on your skin, doing thin coats, and we're going to pour the powder over. You can also dip into the powder. You do not have to pour over. I've just been enjoying it because it gives such a clean application. Now that they're dry, I'm gonna dust everything off. So this next step is totally optional. If you'd like, you can go in with some clear dip powder, depending on what color you're doing, if you wanna protect it when you file in shape. With this being such a sheer, transparent shade, you can also use this same shade again one more time if you'd like as your encapsulation layer. So totally optional. I'm just gonna show you, for example, if you'd like to, you can go in for one more full coat, this is going to vary on personal preference, your lifestyle, your nail length, how much strength you need, if you experience cracking and chipping, it's all going to vary. So this is just an example. If you wanna go in for one more layer, you can. So this is quote unquote, my encapsulation layer. So this is going to protect the color when I file in shape. All right, so I'm done with the rest of my nails. I'm just gonna dust them all off. We're done with dipping at this point. So now we're gonna use our activator and apply a very generous layer of this to each of the nails, making sure to really saturate the nail so it can penetrate through all of those dip powder layers. Now I'm gonna wait two minutes and file and shape off camera. All right, I got these babies into shape. Now we get to the fun part. So I'm gonna use some rubbing alcohol and a lint-free wipe to cleanse the nails. We will not be doing a dip powder top coat. We are gonna do something different. So that's why we're gonna be using rubbing alcohol. We are skipping the second activator step. Here's my little trick on how we're gonna make this look so seamless, a disposable makeup sponge. I'm gonna cut this in half because we don't need the whole thing for this manicure. So now you've got two, you've got an extra one to use later. And 10 by Tina sent me over her liquid chromes. This is not sponsored, nothing. It was just sent over as a gift and I've been dying to try them out. They are stunning. She has tons of colors on her website. And today I'm gonna be using this one here, which is Unicorn Tears number one. 
So I'm just gonna start by applying a little bit here to the edge of the sponge. That's about how much I have on there. You don't need a whole lot. I'm just making sure it's level on the sponge and I don't have too much product in any one spot. Now we're gonna start by going from our free edge back towards our cuticle area. And in the same way, we're gonna do that with the sponge. So we're gonna start at the free edge. And then as we work back on our nail, we're also gonna work the sponge back. So that way the predominant amount of that product you can see is right here on that free edge. And as we work back and we work back on the sponge, the most part of that product on the sponge is also going to still remain at the free edge where we want it. This is gonna help have that blended ombre effect. I'm also making sure I get all the way over to those sidewalls and still just working back on the sponge so that we don't have too much where we don't want it. So if you need to, you can pull the skin back on the sidewall so that you don't get this product on your skin and just do small little blotting motions with the makeup sponge. This is in real time, it is not sped up, nothing is edited out, and this is how fast it is, you guys, that's it. Now with a clean section on my sponge, I'm going to just blot this where the chrome and that solid dip powder shade meet, so in this ombre section. This is just going to soften up that line a little bit and remove a little bit of the liquid chrome, nothing major, and that's it that easy you guys so now for the next nail i'm going to go back and add some more liquid chrome since most of it's either on the nail or absorbed into the sponge following the same steps i'm going to start at the free edge of my nail and free edge of the sponge and as i work my way back to the cuticle area we're going to work our way back on the sponge that way there's less and less product as we move back and it's gonna help give a more blended ombre effect. This is all in real time again, no edits, nothing is sped up. I'm just making sure I get all the way to those sidewall areas holding my skin back, and then once I'm happy with it, I'm gonna use a clean section on my sponge to soften up the look. It definitely reminds me of my nail polish days when I would use makeup sponges for nail art, but it works so perfectly for this. You don't have to do any rubbing, nothing. You won't need gel. And I thought it was the perfect opportunity to show y'all how you can still get this beautiful gradient chrome ombre effect with out having to do any of that no gel no rubbing and i will say i do plan to try these for a full chrome nail but for now i just thought it was like ah the universe aligned and i got sent these products and i got requested to try this look so here it is So I'm gonna finish up the rest of the nails off camera, and then we're gonna make sure that they are fully dry before we go in for our top coat. And I felt like this dried really quick. It's not like a nail polish dry time at all, especially because I didn't put too much on the nail. And you can see here we are, they're fully dry. And now we're gonna go in for our top coat. I'll be using Maniology Smudge Free Top Coat today, and I'm going to start by applying it in the solid color area first, so up here in the pink, and then dragging the excess liquid down across the liquid chrome. This is just to make sure I don't move any of that liquid chrome into the solid area. I also learned on Maniology's website, because this is a water-based top coat, they do suggest applying another nail polish top coat on top of this once it's dry. So totally optional, but just a little tip that I've learned. So once this dries, I'm going to go ahead and just do cuticle oil but if you want more longevity and thickness you can apply another top coat once i'm done with the top coat and it is fully dry i'm going to apply some cuticle oil and as you can see here i bathed my hands in it <laughs> i needed it so badly but that is what all the shine is across my hands and skin i'm just replenishing that moisture thank you so much for this awesome subscriber request thank you tim by tina for letting me play with your liquid chromes and honestly y'all this is such a reminder to kind of like take a step back, not overcomplicate things because I really did. I tried a hundred different techniques. I tried using gloves to rub it on. I tried doing the eyeshadow um, applicator. And at the end of the day, going back to basics and just using a little makeup sponge worked beautifully. Thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you found today's video helpful and I'll see y'all next week.